you've landed at the right place. This channel serves as your stop to join Pastor James in the fight for biblical truth. You'll join him and regular guests weekly as they discuss issues relevant to Bible prophecy, counterculture, politics, and so much more. Grow in your walk with God as we air Bible studies live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. We hope you stick with us as we plan on equipping you to stand bold in the faith during one of the most exciting times in human history. stream will begin soon. For now, here's a clip from a previous live stream with Pastor James and Monkey. An Amazon driver goes to do a delivery at a guy's house. Mm -hmm. He has a ring doorbell. Mm -hmm. The ring doorbell has an automatic response. The automatic response is, how can I help you? Right? Yeah. Automatic response goes off. The Amazon driver thinks that that was not an automatic response, that it was a man making a racial comment to him. So the Amazon driver gets upset. He reports it to Amazon. And Amazon immediately shuts down his house. He has a bunch of Echo devices in there. He has an Alexa device. His ring doorbells, all of that, he gets locked out of it. All of it. Mm. He gets locked out. Thank God he had another camera system that had an NVR in it that actually captured the moment that took place. And it turned out the driver was a bozo. Yeah. Didn't hear it correctly. But think about this, bro. Even if the guy did do something like that, are we now in the business of shutting people down and no longer allowing them to access something that rightfully belongs to you? Yeah. Amazon, yeah. it took Amazon almost two weeks to correct it with a little bit of a sorry and that was it. That just goes to show you the power that's out there that they have already keyed away. You don't just, you know, oh, let me uh, find his account. And let's uh, let's lock that piece off. And then, no, they probably just went click, suspended, you know, yep. and, um, and they'll have that ability uh, when you start talking about all of these different gates, like in terms of 15 minute cities, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's all it is is a mechanism of control. They can control what you spend, where you spend, who you interact with. If they decide, you know what, um, you're you're not permitted to travel to this other city. You're going to be locked in to that city, and that's it. That's all. That's the only place you're going. So, bro, that's coming. it it is dark. It yeah. is dark. And if Amazon can push a button, and nobody on the national level can kick and scream about that, yeah. and they can get away with completely shutting a man's house down, yeah. bro, what what else can Amazon not do? Yeah, it's it is uh 1984 it's, it, dude beyond 1984 1984 was prophetic but bro yeah. it's like 1984 on steroids you're right it's completely orwellian yeah. completely yeah. yeah i mean you think about it in, in in the book 1984 they were they were able to control where you went they watched where you went they knew who you were interacting with and uh, that's exactly what we are here um i i don't think that when he wrote that is is uh uh, as much as as you you think, wow, how did they? Was it a playbook or a script? How did he know that this stuff was coming? I don't do, know that it, he could actually imagine to the level that we have today. Yo. If you haven't picked this up by now, Monkey has available items for purchase over on his website at monkeyworksus.com. He has a wide range of products from Monkey Works gear, jewelry, to body butter, and so much more. When you purchase from him, you support Monkey directly. 
See more by visiting monkeyworksus.com. YouTube restricts what we can and can't say. Heck, I'm surprised they let me say that. Never mind, I just got censored. Follow today's after show over on Locals where you can support Pastor James and his family directly. Go to jamescadiz.locals.com and subscribe there. You will get access to exclusive, unrestricted content, devotionals, and more. If you haven't heard, which I mean, there probably is very few people that have not heard, uh, this Titan, the the submarine that they were looking for over the last several days, uh, they basically found a debris field, which means it imploded. If you're not familiar with that, if you would imagine uh, taking a, a soda can and just basically squeezing it to the point where there's just no air in it anymore, it just gets completely crushed. That's what happened. All right. And so uh, there's some that say that was a very fast uh, happening, like in, in terms of faster than a bullet, you'd never even know it would know what hit you. Um, that may be the case. I'm, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Navy guys could probably tell you from a submarine perspective, because I am sure that they are briefed on that kind of thing. So, uh, but they say, uh, that what happened is Coast Guard has confirmed that the, uh, submersible suffered a catastrophic implosion with the loss of all five people on board. Uh, this confirmation comes following an analysis of debris field found within the search area. So they're finding stuff that actually have names, you know, they're the, the, craft name on it o ocean gate and uh what really gets interesting and this is where um if you're if you're familiar with uh the pressures when you get underwater this thing supposedly could go down to about twelve thousand feet below um i think this mission particularly was around uh i don't know ten thousand, maybe maybe more they were headed out to look at the titanic but uh, just to give you a general idea at ten thousand feet below uh, the surface in water, you're experiencing roughly uh, 6,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. So uh, if if that uh, doesn't kind of uh, give you a general idea, um, that's basically three tons of pressure every square inch against that. Would you like to support Monkey Works directly? Head over to patreon.com forward slash monkeyworks US. You'll be greeted with four membership levels. Starting at the first tier is Spider Monkey. This tier is $3 per month, gaining Discord benefits, exclusive access to ad free content, live sit reps, Q and A's, and video archives. If that's not enough, step up to the next level of Howler Monkey. For just $5 a month, you'll not only have Spider Monkey's benefits, but you'll get exclusive discounts to the workshop plus voting voice on new products. Next up is Space Monkey. At $10 per month, this is the ultimate level of Overwatch. At this altitude, you'll gain access to no ad content, full archive, voting power, workshop discounts, and monthly AMAs where you can ask Monkey anything. Lastly, for the Monkey Works superfan, you can become the Banana Knot. You'll get all the benefits of Space Monkey plus an exclusive Monkey Works item every month you are subscribed that you can't buy in the workshop. Head over to patreon.com forward slash monkeyworksus to begin your membership and be a part of a God-loving patriotic community. I'm glad you're still hanging in there. I want to let you know about the free, available content that Pastor James offers other than YouTube. You can also catch him over on Rumble and Instagram. Find him by searching at James Cadiz.
Looking for unrestricted, exclusive content from Pastor James? Find it on Locals. I will never buy the lie that actually says, I am going to vote for somebody who is more viable to win. We are going to do some in-depth analysis on this on our Locals broadcast. Did you just say babushka? I sure did, Daddy. approach the responsibility given to me in the assembly and the safety certification of these helicopters I needed to allow the need presented in front of me to determine the tool that I needed to use and the only way to do that would be to engage in the work so as I engage in the work if I ran into a difficulty or a hardship with respect to a step required of me I stopped for a moment to reflect upon that and recognize Is what I'm doing a result or the failure in what I'm doing the result of me not listening to instructions or reading instructions or is it the result of me running into a wall that has been created by a deficiency in a tool that I need in order to accomplish what I need to accomplish. Pretty soon I began to realize something. As I do the work, I began to recognize what my deficiencies were. In some areas, they were skill set related. Things that I had to develop within my own ability, my motor skills, my understanding, associations with how I do things, certain weight variations. I had to work on all of that stuff. But there were also other things that caused me to realize while I was doing the work, I need this tool. I need that tool. I need this tool. I need that tool. And then I began to buy the tools that were dictated by my needs. And I began to realize something pretty extraordinary. Not only was I effectively accomplishing the purposes that were set forth in front of me, but I was enjoying every minute of it. Why? Because I was realizing only when I chose to do the work and allow the work to dictate my needs in order to accomplish the responsibility set forth in front of me, did those responsibilities become fulfilling in their completion. God told Adam, look, get this job done. Do this work. And as he started doing the work, watch this, folks. Watch this. He recognized his need and God gave him exactly what he recognized he needed, the deficiency. In this case, it was a woman. The woman didn't complete Adam. Don't listen to that mistake, right? The woman complimented Adam. But once the woman came into the garden and that picture was absolutely established, the enemy immediately immediately went after the word of God. I know you're excited to watch. In the meantime, you can comment or share your thoughts over in the chat with other Christians or non-Christians. You guys are welcome too. For all you super chatter and rumble ranters, we appreciate your support. I'd acknowledge you, but I can't see your comments. Voiceover guy only does voiceovers. Hang in tight, the stream will start in just a moment. I think the reason why we're talking about this kind of thing is to demonstrate the fact that Satan has always actively taken on a role to create the same kind of outcome that things like Operation Paperclip created. The system that they have been working on for the last 80 years is indeed becoming the beast system. Actually, there are biblical patterns that we can point to that shows the enemy using less sophisticated tools because of the technology at the time to, in essence, cause and to affect the very same problems. It's all coming down to that very thing is control. And that's what everybody's trying to gain is control of of the scene, everything. They want to control it all. 
Monkey. Right. They it's could all- have prevented World War II, bro. They chose Instead, not they to. lit it on fire. This is becoming more and more obvious, and it goes back down to the fact that Satan is the greatest of conspirators out yeah. there. The closer you are to the Lord, the more inclined and familiar you will be with freedom because he is the ultimate definition of what freedom looks like. And the yeah. further away you get from the Lord, the less inclined you are to anything that's freedom. Just look around. The world is in absolute chaos. How in the world can we expect things to get better when you turn your back on the true and living God? In fact, you're being tracked right from your own pocket. 24-7, they know you better than you know you. Just like you said, James, complete and total chaos. Folks, what a beautiful day it is. We are on the heels of a pretty amazing 4th of July celebration. There are a lot of things that we've got coming up that we are looking forward to. We're going to fill you in on some of that stuff later. Today, we are going to talk about the military-industrial complex that is Ukraine right now. We're going to talk about the insanity with the neo-Nazi world, and yes, I am saying that, uh, that is also Ukraine. We are going to talk about the propagandist machine that is Ukraine. We are going to talk about the lies that continue to be communicated on a regular basis on every level, using every tool, including AI, to brainwash American people into sympathizing with that kind of nonsense. But... Um, we're also going to talk about this guy that's right next to me that's got this massive fro on, looking as slick as usual. <laughs> Monkey, what's cracking, man? What's up, dog? You know, man. <laughs> Woo! I'm just hanging out, listening to the tune. I just got it all going on, man. You know? Oh, he's going to make it happen. Are you going to yeah. do it, bro? Oh, here yeah. it is. Here we go. Ready? Quiet down, everybody. <laughs> Get down with your bad self, bro. Yeah. Hey, do you I know that we had a couple of nasty comments on the chipmunk voice? Did we really? Yeah. It's I, crazy. Well, you know what? People can do. Yeah. <laughs> Turn down the volume. Turn down the volume. What I was looking for. Bro, it, look, in a crazy world, like yeah. the world that we are living in, uh, I don't think people realize or recognize how good it is to have a little bit of humor. Yeah, that's exactly why I do that. It is. It's all about humor. It's just trying to make light of a of a very heavy situation. This, uh, yeah, you're right, man. The things going on right now in Ukraine are not good, and uh, there's chatter on both sides, so that validates uh, what we are hearing. Otherwise, you know, if you only hear it on one side, you think, well, somebody's up to something. But, man, when when you get them both at all levels, this is what's crazy, as you were just talking about this powder keg of a Ukraine that we're watching unfold. You've got Russia countering the the chatter that's coming from the U.S. about, you know, or actually coming from Zelensky in Ukraine. And then we have, uh, you know, on all, it's it's hitting at the top levels within m- mainstream media, which, you know, they have their talking points, but it's all the way down into the lower level chatters as well. So it's pretty crazy. But yeah, no, I'm doing well, man. Just, uh, you know, trying to get rid of copperhead snakes in my backyard and um, and skunks that are as big as my, my pups and... <laughs> Yeah. Hey, bro. Uh, welcome to the country. That's right. That's, that's what happens when you live in the country. That is exactly what happens. And I'm trying to make adjustments to it because this is their world, you know, that, that my my uh, home is parked in and they're, they're all around me. And so wife and I were just relaxing last night. It was almost dark. We were letting the dogs go to the bathroom before we settled in for the night. Right. And um, and I see this this black object walking across the backyard and I'm like, that's that's not my dog. And I'm looking closer, and then I realize that's a skunk, and my dogs have not seen that skunk yet. And so uh, they didn't get sprayed. Uh, luckily, they didn't go after it. They just both, both of them, like us, were looking at this thing go across the backyard. And, uh, yeah, 
that's uh I've I've never seen that, you know, living in the big city before. So that's it's it's interesting. That's when it's time to go hunting and we just have to be careful. But see the problem with skunk yeah, is if you go hunting then it, it doesn't it's not pleasant. Yeah, and I don't I don't I I I can't I'm not an animal. I now I'll kill snake in a heartbeat and I'll kill spiders in a heartbeat, but I don't kill animals, even if it's a skunk. I'm just, you know, let them pass and uh you know raccoons that kind of stuff they're they're just yeah I'm okay just, but so here's a quiz if yeah. a big bear was coming at you okay and you had no choice but to handle yeah. it but yeah to, boom boom would you kill the bear yeah if your life's in danger but my you know a skunk's not gonna i mean spray you and you know hiss at you a little bit maybe but <laughs> yeah yeah bears i would i and people i don't have any problem with people but uh you know <laughs> I love animals, man. I can't, uh, I can't, I just can't do it. Can't bring myself to it. I, 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 you know, I don't know, but anyway, I, I do want to mention this really quickly before we, we move on to the topic at hand, because it is, yeah. um, uh, it, it means a lot to us. First of all, we have had a tremendous response on locals and on Patreon. I think Monkey has had a much larger response on Patreon than I have had on locals, but it has been amazing to both of us. Um, we want to thank you guys for supporting us there. Um, we are more motivated than we ever have been to do some of these shows that we've been doing and uh, more motivated, not because of the increase that we're getting in people that are supporting us, but more motivated because the free area that we have or the free space that we have to be able to communicate certain things is uh, very cathartic in a way. And um, we, we've we been working very hard. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure. I think we're filming one today. I, I don't know. I got to talk to Monkey about that. I don't, I don't know. But either way, um, there, there is a lot that you – there's no way you could possibly know, but you have helped both Monkey and I in ways you can't even imagine. Yeah. The love and support you guys show through doing that means more to us than you can possibly imagine. And I wanted to go out of my way to say thank you for that. I also want to thank all of you guys that are doing Super Chats and Super Stickers. You guys are really, really amazing. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, Ira Beam, uh, you say, may Christ be magnified always. Thank you. Uh, John and Roger, Viking Loves Jesus. Thank you, guys. Sherry Rogers, um, you're just very, thank you. What an encouraging uh, text here. You say, I just wanted to thank you uh, for all the prayers for my daughter, uh, she was in a bad accident, but doing great. And we are really happy to hear that, Sherry, because we have been praying for her, knowing and trusting that the Lord was going to uh, protect her. And we're really grateful to hear that news. Ray Goldsboro, as usual, very generous. Thank you so much. Uh, Bart Jen, thank you. Um, we are late. Uh, and that is my fault, all my fault. Uh, there's a long story behind that. Uh, but we're glad to be here. Uh, Pollyanna Johnson, thank you. Mr. Red. Thank you. And uh, look, I, I share your sentiment. You say, I can't wait to be in heaven. I believe God will reveal to us the darkest secrets and operations that happen on earth and how uh, his hand has maneuvered through it all. God bless you, James and Monkey. And I will just tell you this, Mr. Red, I'm not sure we'll even care at that point, because yeah. when we're in heaven, it's not going to matter what happened here, because, you know, we've got so much that we're going to be rejoicing after uh, and Mark, yeah, amen to you, bro. Mark says, uh, God has a sense of humor. Uh, he created a giraffe and a duck, uh, and a duck build platypus chipmunk on brothers. I like that. That's good yeah. perspective. And Husker, thank you so much. You say Jesus is Lord. We do agree with that. Um, I just, I do want to say that one more time. You guys have been a blessing. Thank you. I, I, I think it's important to thank people. Uh, for the sacrifices that they make and the things that they continue to do to make yeah. uh, make these things happen. You guys are a blessing, and I want to I really thank you for that. Um, yeah. Monkey. Yes, sir. Dude, what's your perspective on this? I, I think that I am underplaying it a little bit when I say that Ukraine is a powder keg ready to go boom. Uh, yeah. Bro, there is so much insanity, and we just got word that they found a highly, highly expensive form of cocaine in the White House, right? Yeah. Um, I, it, look, it, it, as Charlie Kirk would say, it probably wasn't Hunter's because it was found in an electronic, electronic storage closet, and Hunter doesn't know how to store electronics, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> uh, that's a yeah, joke. It's 
Yeah, and it wasn't the, it wasn't the uh, the big guys because uh, you know he doesn't have the alertness to be on anything. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So I I I, I got to tell you, bro. I actually, you know, I wonder if maybe uh, we're going to get into some speculative conversation that's going to end up getting us in trouble. But I maybe yeah. we'll talk about it on locals. But I I will tell you, bro. The world is getting darker when we have come to a place where even the media is beginning to, uh, although ignore most of the significant stories, is beginning to talk about some of the things that we're actually seeing in the White House. We have been shamed and embarrassed by the actions of the current president of the United States. He is an evil, demonically inspired man who continues to play into the wishes and the desires of the deep state. And what we're watching in Ukraine right now is undoubtedly a deep state operation. Uh, bro, mm -hmm. where do we start with this? Well, one, um, you know, back on the the uh, the white powder in the White House, it's, it is just goes to show you how much our um, our country has deteriorated. The fact that we, the people, allow that. It just blew right through the news cycle like, oh, man, dude had some C in there or whatever they're calling it, right? You know, uh, they, what, you know this, this is just, um, it's, it's the same thing when we hear about Bob Marley's, you know, smoking dope in the White House. It's the environment they're in. They're, they're just having a big party on our, on our dime, our expense. They're not representing us anymore. They haven't been for many, many years. And um, it's just a, it's a den of thieves, man. And that's the, that's what we, the people need to wake up and quit allowing it. Every time we, we hear a story like that and we just brush it off or just shake our head, whatever it may be, we're condoning it because we're not doing anything about it to stop it. And until we have a change of heart in this country and start putting God first and start, you know, pushing out this evil and this evil agenda, it, it, they're going to walk all over us because that's how they operate. It's not how we operate. It, it's just we're going to have to take a hard stand here sooner or later. In terms of Ukraine, the deep state, yeah. I, You know, the thing is, looking at the data, it would make zero sense for the Russians to actually detonate that, that facility because it contaminates Crimea. It contaminates a large portion of, of the western side, uh, southwestern side of Russia. It would kill millions and millions and millions of people. And uh, it, it just, it's, it would be stupid. And Putin's not a, he's not a dumb guy. I mean, he's a smart guy. We know that. And uh, he's, he's very much like Trump. He, he's very, he, he calculates things. He's, you know, um, very, very surgical in, in, in his actions and the things that he does. And, um, you know, he, he's not going to do that. Now, who would do that would be our deep state or Ukraine. They would do it because it would push the Russians back. And, um, you know, it would uh, maybe even allow them to uh, use it against him and and rally the world against Russia. That's that's their thinking and their mindset. That's what they're trying to do. In my opinion, that's what I believe they're doing. Yeah, bro. Look, uh, it. it it, you're not only on the money here, but I think we have graduated from what we know is obviously happening over there yeah. to now a newer level propagandist machine that is being deployed to want to re-brainwash and repatriate the minds of those who are looking at Ukraine to convince people that it is the way to go, right? Like, hey, yeah. listen, we have to support this cause because this is the cause of freedom, when in reality, everybody who's looking at this straight recognizes this is not the cause of freedom. This is the cause of Satan. And, yeah. uh, and, and look, even if you didn't look at it from any of those perspectives, you just looked at it from the perspective of who's going to win and who isn't going to win. If you know that the word of God is real and accurate, then you're not going to invest money in a losing cause. Yeah, it's funny not to mention the fact that if you understand the geopolitics of the area and you understand what's actually really going on, mm -hmm. you realize very quickly that an overwhelming majority of the Ukrainian citizens are sympathetic towards the causes of a uh, or the idea of a combined Russian conglomerate. People don't recognize that. Putin yeah. in many ways is a folk hero to a lot of people, not just in Crimea. Right. Yeah. But lots of other areas. And if you don't believe me, sit down and talk to some of the citizens of Georgia. 
It, if you if it, people don't understand that it didn't work like the USSR gets broken up and then all of a sudden everybody who breaks up from the USSR you know, is happy to be gone and not a part of it anymore. Most of them recognized that they had, in many ways, a more stable life when they were the uh, federation that existed at that point. I, yeah. I, people don't realize that. Well, so think, uh, it's it's a hard politic to figure out for some. It is, and think about what caused all of the breakup of that. That was the U.S. and the Cold War. All right, so we're to blame for that, uh, realistically. Uh, you know, the crazy thing is, and if you just kind of put it in this perspective, if you were to take Mexico and imagine that China uh, had been working behind the scenes for many, many, many years, say 80 years, right, since a, since a major world war, and they had a stronghold down there, and that was their basically uh, their location where they were running ops, smuggling drugs, pushing uh, human trafficking, all that kind of stuff, right? Then you take Texas. And imagine that uh, Texas is is like Ukraine, right? It's about the same size. And then you got the rest of the United States. So if if Texas were to secede and you had China down in, in Mexico, that would be the environment here in the United States. How do you think the U.S. would react to having a China on the other side of the border in Mexico with Texas being recently seceded and, uh, and China is now fighting at our border trying to take that Texas chunk, right? <laughs> it would be it's it's the same kind of scenario that we have over there. The difference is our deep state put pushed all the chips onto the table back in 1948, and uh, they set up their stronghold right there across the border from Russia, and they've been operating out of that all of this time. And so that's that's where we are really uh, today. Okay, and so now you you've got something that is about to occur where you're going to allow Ukraine who, by the way, has not been allowed to be a part of NATO because of their corruption. That was the number one reason. They've never been allowed into NATO because of corruption. And you're about to let them bypass the, the map process that allows, uh, the, and, and that map process is basically when uh, a country submits to the NATO countries and says, I would like to become a, mem a member, like say Sweden, right? And they do an investigation to go, are they ethically, morally, you know, uh, viable option to join NATO? Ukraine can't pass that muster. So now they're going to bypass the map process, allow them to come in. As soon as, they, as soon as they allow them in as one of the NATO countries, you instantly declare war because of the whole um, Article 5 of NATO that says if you go against one of us, you go against all of us. Right. And so that's where this is headed. And they're about to allow Ukraine to bypass that and, and vote them into NATO. Well, this is the look, this is the big problem that we are facing right now uh, that no one is seeing or no one is recognizing. And this is a this is a huge issue here. And this Article five issue that you brought up is significant. And what most people don't realize is whether or not some of these other member states are sophisticated, whether yeah. or not they have the type of ability to be able to observe certain things or in certain areas, the yeah. one thing they do know and the one thing that they are aware of is Article 5. Yeah. And they are aware of the fact that they will be dragged into war, and they're also aware of the fact that Zelensky is a pig. Okay? I'm yeah. sorry to say that. Make he is a warmonger. He yeah. has absolutely no desire to see human life preserved. If he did, he would go immediately into peace talks. He would have gone into peace talks the very moment uh, Putin was at the gates. And the other problem is you have people who are evil, deep state people that are complicit with the cause of death, like Lindsey Graham, for example, which yeah. anybody who calls himself a conservative that supports a man like Lindsey Graham, you better think twice because yeah. he is on the side of marked wickedness and evil, okay? Yeah. If you go, Lindsey Graham takes pride in standing up in front of the international community and calling for the assassination of President Putin. Are you out of your mind? Yeah, well, Are if, you you nuts? Hear, if you hear anybody, um, anybody within our, our government body that is pro-Ukraine, uh, they are they are connected highly to the deep state, okay? That's that that they're they're showing their colors through that loyalty, and uh, it, so you have to take mental note of that when you hear somebody like Graham say something 
or any of the others for that matter about, oh, you know, we've got to support Ukraine and f- push back Russia. They are, they're, they're definitely deep state guys. They, they've been, you know, pulled into the, the dragon's lair, so to speak. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, but if you go look at the Bible, uh, what does it tell you? It's, it talks about Gog Magog, right? And the U.S. isn't, I'm telling you, the U.S. isn't going to be um, any, any significant factor in any of this. No, look, not one bit. And again, we have to go back to understanding certain variables that are associated with the marked foolishness on the part of the people that are supposed to be protecting the interests of the Americans by holding uh, government officials into account, the media. The media is the propagandist arm of the deep state and the hard left. Whether or not anybody wants to admit it and whether or not anybody wants to understand it, the hard left has always been an, an extended, reached, powerful arm of the deep state. The deep state has always controlled the leftist interest. As a matter of fact, what a lot of people don't understand, when you go back and you start examining some of the things that happened post-World War I, not two, World War I, you begin to realize very quickly that the formation of the deep state was through a conglomerate of people that had interests very similar to that of the Deep South during the time of slavery in order to control a nation, understanding early on that they would have to make an extended effort to do so to be able to get their purposes accomplished. Whether or not you have opened or marked slavery today is superfluous. They have many plantations, and those plantations are in some cases, yes, the ghettos that we see all around us. In many cases, some of those plantations are um, corporations. Many of those, I'm telling you, bro, these people have mastered what they have done, and they are good at it. They are very good at it. They are like their father, the devil. That's right. Yes, they are. And they are, uh, you know, they they are agenda-driven. I mean, you know what's crazy is I was, you, you, you get these alternate, news sources out right you think oh newsmax is good right well everybody's fox is bad now right well we knew that fox isn't good um but i was i was uh channel surfing just a little while ago before we jumped on here and uh i i had you know nbc5 local you know was on and they're talking they got a talking point on this whole this whole new uh zuckerberg uh zuckerberg uh uh platform called uh uh, thread i think it is right it's it's part of instagram or something and they're talking about it and i'm like oh, i can't listen to this garbage so i click over to newsbacks identical same talking points on newsbacks as you had on nbc uh, just uh, about the whole twitch thing you go to another channel it's the same stuff they are all all of them regardless of of what we think they are uh they are they're I mean, they're all in it together. And it, and the whole idea is to program us and tell us what to think, when to think, how to think. And um, that's it's no different. So when we hear all these deep state talking points and we hear these things about Ukraine, you never hear any anything that's fair and balanced on it. It's all heavily leaning Ukraine stuff. Uh, that ought to tell you all you need to know. You know, it's uh, and, and it doesn't matter. You can get it. You'll get the same spin whether it's Fox, whether it's Newsmax, whether it's whatever you're you know, OAN, they're all one and the same. And we have to remember that because they fool us into thinking that they are one way. And uh, but they're not. They're a wolf in sheep's clothing. And every single one of them have the exact same drive and they get paid the same way. And it's all coming from our deep state because they have unlimited money to, to do this. So it's not. I am f- I'm in full and complete wholehearted agreement with you. I am I am completely in agreement with you. It's it's completely crazy. Uh, Vindog not- actually says something interesting. He says Newsmax is a part of Operation Mockingbird. They're all compromised. I wonder why. Yeah. So so this is kind of funny. Vinny doesn't make irresponsible statements, and no. he doesn't make emotional statements. Because no. uh, I've known Vin for a while now, and he's yeah. smart at what he does. He's probably one of the most uh, popular radio DJs of all time. Uh, you know, he comes from the Rick D's era. I'm, I, I, I Vinny, I got to get in your head and I got to find out why you're making that statement. I have some ideas on that, but holy smokes, dude. And I, I and I agree. I think all of these media conglomerates, I, I can't trust them. And look, no. I, 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 I'll mention one name that I think is worthwhile bringing up because it just goes to prove our point. 
if you look at guys like Jack Hibbs, who always appears on like Fox and Newsmax and OAN and all that stuff, yeah. whether or not he'll say it out loud, it's obvious that he does not trust any of the mainstream media conglomerates, including those guys that are conservative, yeah. because he just started his own. He just started his own media channel that isn't influenced by any of that stuff. Yeah, right. Good. So uh, I look, I <laughs> when you have a guy like Jack who's actually making changes like that, you know yeah. things are bad. You know yeah. that things are bad. Yeah. You, yeah. you know it's terrible. I mean, that's why Charlie Kirk is doing the things that he's doing. That's why a lot of these guys are doing the things that they're doing because they recognize the lies and the dishonesty that continues to be kept. And it bothers me when you begin to see organizations like them begin to carry the same company line. Like the very moment you go to NBC and you see something they're saying on NBC, mm -hmm. and then you turn over to Newsmax and you see Newsmax sharing the same line, yeah, they're compromised. Yes, they are. Don't trust them. You. Yeah, and and it's like that all the way through. You, you just you, if you had them all lined up and you just went by each one. In fact, they almost hit it at the same time. Yeah, like it's, oh yeah, it, you know, eleven minutes in, boom, here it is. You know, that's it's they're all kind of on the same deal. It's yeah, it's absolutely incredible. I I just um, I don't know. It's discouraging because. Uh, there is nobody out there that's going to give you, any, you know, the real, the real scoop. Um, we even, even when we do our show, uh, there are, there are even altern alternative uh, news sources that, that, uh, you know, my guys will give me. And I'm like, uh, I just discard it. I'm like, don't ever send me one from X, Y, Z again, because right. it's, it's, it's garbage, you know? Well, this is the thing that's really, this is the thing that's kind of crazy with it all. Right. It's become and it's hard for to get people to understand this level of intelligence gathering. They they you know it's a it's an art that takes a lot of years to be able to develop, and we do yeah. it uh, pretty well. There's a lot of other people that have that have gotten really good at doing it, but there there is an art, uh, not just a chart, right? There's an art to the idea of looking at all the news that's out there and being able to discern what is in essence yeah. a plant. Versus what is, uh, you know, just a, a, a like a legit form of misinformation versus what is actually like, whoa, this is, you know, a yeah. hardcore concerted effort to brainwash the minds of people. And when you when you get to the point where you're really able to go through all of these sources, find the commonalities or more importantly, find the purposeful omissions or redactions that exist in some of those things, you begin yeah. to realize very, very quickly the kind of errors that are being made, right? And I think that right now, the only people that are trustworthy uh, still can't be blindly trusted. Everybody has to be double, oh, even us. You should yeah. double check all the resources. Why do I want you to double check what me and Monkey say? I want you to double check what me and Monkey say in the off chance that we are totally wrong about something. I want to be called on it so that we can go back and we can correct the record so that people understand that we are we are a place that has a reputation for telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah, you and I have been burned on it before, right? Doing oh, a show dude. and then we find out that uh, it uh, was bad info. There um, are people that we will not associate anymore because we've been burned so bad on yeah. some of that stuff. Yeah, for sure. It's just it's just the truth because it's it's just too dangerous. It, it just is. really is too dangerous. Well, and it's uh, yeah, you you do have to double check your stuff. I've got guys that follow me that that uh, give me good info, but I'm like, I need to. You got to tell me your source. You can't just throw something at me because you know I'm not gonna. I'm I've been burned like that m multiple times, and what I found too, in 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 some of the older cases where I was burned was I I start to to go. Uh, I think these guys work for the agency. They're they're trying to throw something that I'm gonna repeat. To, to further their agenda. You know what I mean? Where they, they, they get you out there and then I'm the mockingbird, right? They tell me something and then I say it. And then, and then I, you know, I go after a while, you start to realize, Hey, wait a second here. I'm, I'm headed down a path. And all of a sudden the, these guys just happen to come in around the time that I'm, you know, really like a dog on the, on the, you know, I'm on the scent and I'm, I'm heading down that, that trail and uh, they come in and they do, you know, try to throw me off to uh, in another direction. And I'm like, well, either they're doing it for my safety, but uh, or, or they're not. And they, typically they're not because they're sending me off in a direction that is, oh yeah, uh, counterproductive and and um, 
you know, something else that just, it really takes away your credibility and that's, it does harm. And so anyway, but I mean, dude, did you ever think we would see days like, I mean, and this, and I'm not trying to sound harsh when I say this, but did you ever think you would see days where people like Alex Jones were a hundred times more credible than the, than the mainstream news media? No. No. I mean, do who's, if you, if I played a video of myself saying that two years ago, I would be like, oh my goodness, Lord, what happened to me? Like, yeah. look, don't let that happen to me, Lord. You know, yeah. but it's gotten to I that know. point. It's gotten to the point yeah. where if you want credible news information, you're definitely not going to find it in the mainstream media. And you no. be, and the way you can find it is by looking for gems in the midst of piles of garbage. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <clears throat> And, and I think they use that stuff, honestly. I think these countries and these leaders, uh, these elite, use it to communicate. I think they put an article out there to, to with buzzwords in it that uh, only they would recognize. And they would go, okay, all right. We're, and, you know, I guarantee you there's something to it. Has to be. Has I, to be. I would, I would probably, look, I, this is a crazy statement to say, but I bet my life on the fact that you're right. Yeah. And I noticed that a while back with, with words like concrete. And you would hear, you know, the the lower level uh, mockingbirds like the Clintons, you know, they would use that term a lot. And you're like, why are they always talking about concrete? That doesn't make any sense. How, that's not even somebody's regular vocabulary. You think about it. You and I talking, we could talk for two years. And when am I ever going to bring up the word concrete in our stuff? I just said I'm not. It's It was weird. Yeah, and, that, you know, you know or that. they start talking about dogs. You know, all of a sudden you see these articles about people and their dogs or they make something. It's because they are finding a way to communicate with somebody about something. And they're, and that is a coded message. It's crazy. And yeah. uh, I'm trying to think what else that uh, oh, climate control. That's the other word. Right. You hear that word and you're like, bing. OK, there's something they're 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 doing it again. And uh, climate change. You know, it's always that climate change. Yeah. So and then it's, where do you hear it? You hear it from the World Economic Forum, Great Reset. What is it, the, the biggest thing that they're pushing? It's about the climate change, right? Bro, so true. So true. And it's dark, bro. It's get, and, and the sad thing is, is it's getting darker and darker by the moment. It is. It's yeah. getting darker and darker by the yeah. moment, and people are not recognizing it for what it is. That's the thing yeah. that's kind of scary. Yeah. So so let's, let's, let's go back to this Ukraine thing, right? Yep. We've got – so you go back uh, maybe – Five six weeks ago, I'm I'm kind of not I'm not uh, totally dialed in on the on the actual date that it happened off the top of my head. But go back five six weeks and remember when they blew out a dam that uh, basically flooded this giant area down into Ukraine was killing all these Ukrainians. You remember that? Oh and yeah. We're like, we're like uh, okay, well what happened? Uh, the dam that blew basically dropped the water level down to the point that. Um, that it was basically taking the water that was cooling the reacting or the reactors or the the cooling towers right for the nuclear power plant um and it was going to cause that nuclear power plant to basically you know overheat and then it would have a meltdown and then you would have exactly what would what would be chernobyl right um same thing and uh, i was like why would the russians wouldn't do that you know and they're all saying oh the russians took out the dam when I don't really think they did. I think somebody else blew it. I think the U.S. probably did it or Ukrainians did it with the intent <clears throat> that would prevent the Russians from coming in from the side of Crimea, pushing into their country, right, for this big offensive. Because it happened right before the spring offensive kicked off. And I yep. think what that did, you throw a bunch of water in, you know, and it's I don't care how deep it is, you're not going to get tanks across that area. Right? Yeah, uh, uh, think think about it like this, bro. Like, you, and and this is something that that uh, it's funny that you brought up the whole spring offensive thing. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I'm not going to get into all the ins and outs of Wagner. Wagner's done. Whether yeah. or not anybody wants to talk about it, yeah. those guys are going to start getting secretly picked off. They're going to start getting eliminated one by one. There's a whole other thing that's going on there. There was some massive collusion going on between Wagner and the deep state. That's a whole other story, right? We know yeah. that. Yeah. We've been talking about that. The politics of it are significant. The variables involved are sophisticated. The deep state is sophisticated. They know that, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but 
here's the thing. We got it. We we need to get this because we we have some people asking. Well, is Wagner behind this? Actually, Wagner was a tool behind bigger people involved in all of this. And the reality of it is, the deep state is who <laughs> manipulated them. It, it, here's the thing that I always thought was weird, and me and you talked about this. We may have talked about it publicly or privately. I don't remember if it was public or private. Yeah. But when the spring counter offensive started, right? That was yeah. actually a big fat nothing. Yeah. This was the thought going on in our minds. This was the prevailing thought between me and you. It was okay, either it was a dismal fail and they're minimizing everything that they just did or saw, or or they were being told to back off because something else is in the works. Yeah. And you know what that something else was that was in the works? Wagner. And by the time Wagner starts getting closer to Moscow, you have to keep in mind what, what Russia did. Russia yeah. sent in a bunch of Czech mercenaries yeah. that stood there, 18,000 of them, right yeah. there that said, you guys are going to die a terrible death. Is that what you want to do? Do you want to die a terrible death? And that's when Prigozhin says, okay, we've changed our minds. Everybody runs away. It all begins to fall apart. You think that they just came up with this deal out of nowhere because of the goodness of their heart? Yeah. Russia Russia did what Russia was going to do, and everybody recognized it and realized it. And see, here's the thing that's really funny. A lot of – did you notice that the West right now is trying to project Wagner and Prigozhin as this hero? I don't know if you've noticed that. That, that they're, they're actually showing these welcoming parades for Wagner – you know, mm. coming in specifically Prigozhin, they're, they're like these welcoming, pro, you know, parades. Hey, welcome in, welcome, welcome. We love you, we love you. Anybody that understands a lick of Russian knows that what they're saying is, "Why did you do this? Why did you do this? Get out of here!" Yeah, it's like it, it's unbelievable the yeah. kind of propagandist tools that are being deployed to communicate a principle that we know is contrary to what's true. Yeah. Yep, for sure. Yeah, it's all spin, man. That's the thing, and it's it is uh, uh, that is unfortunately the world that we are we are in now, and there is a, a silent war happening through that spin cycle, and uh, it's not just that, but then cyber, it's it's all of these different soft target element type of things where you're you're you can't defend against them. It's it's mind control. It's all psyop, really, um, on both sides, and uh, and we are, are who's trying to make sense of it all are the ones that are really the, the, you know the ones that are being caught up in it so it's yeah, it's a it's a crazy world we live in no doubt about that but this this uh i think honestly i think the wagner group played played the deep state they took their 6.2 billion dollars that was just miraculously found and freed up and uh, i think they they all got paid very well and i think it was it was a mock run at at moscow in my opinion i think they were they were rolling that way and then they they called off the dogs and and this wagner guy went to belarus and and laid low and um and uh you know i it's that's just what it seemed to be after the dust had settled out that it's it's there's just something more to it i also find it interesting that if you look at the area that was about to be radiated and you look at where all of a sudden the Wagner guys all basically bailed out of there and and either went towards Moscow or went to Belarus to this new camp in Belarus, which is on the north side, that takes them out of that radiation zone based on on jet stream and everything else. So uh, it, it just I don't know. It does. It all stinks to eye heaven. There's no two ways about it. And if you blow that that nuclear reactor, it's the it's the largest nuclear reactor in in Europe, I believe. Um, I, if I read that right, it's very, very massive. And you saw what Chernobyl did and how long that affected people. And, people, you know, everybody's outside like, oh, it's snowing. They're catching these radioactive ashes on their tongues thinking they're catching. And, and of course, they're dead in two weeks. It's that's that is what the reality is if 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 they do indeed blow that. So we'll see the the NATO guys are all meeting in Latvia, I think it is, or Lithuania. I can't remember. It's one of the L countries there um, bordering the Baltic Sea. Uh, this, I think, the mid-month they're going, and I know Flashbang's going to be there. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they bring in um, 
Ukraine at that point. And if they allow them, uh, if they do, then you're going to have a, a, a declaration of war immediately as soon as you let them in. You have to. I, I, I guess the question that I have is, do, do these people see it? I don't think I, the other true. nations ha- the other nations have to see it and have to be like walking on eggshells. Maybe, maybe I, let's let's. I mean, here's the reality: if the United States goes away, NATO goes away. NATO won't stand without the United States because the United States is one. It's the it's the money behind it all, and um, they don't they don't have the backbone and the strength to fight on their own without the United States in there. And so I think we've got them. We got them by the short hairs. And we're like, well, hey, you know what? You do as I tell you to do, or we back out and you guys become Russian. Because, you know, what's going to happen if the United States backs out? NATO collapses, and then every one of those countries that have been throwing rocks at Russia this entire time now become targets, right? Right. So I, that's what I think is going on. I mean, Russia, uh, the U.S., even even Trump had said at one point, right, we're like 90 percent of NATO, like all of our money, everything we go in. Trump went in there and said, hey, that's I'm done. I'm done footing the bill. You guys want NATO. Then we you're going to have to start pony ponying up and putting money in the in the coffer. And, um, you know, they started. And then as soon as he left, all of a sudden flashbangs like, nah, don't worry about it, man. We're going to pump money into Ukraine. They'll launder it for us, and then we'll 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 take it and we'll put it all into our personal accounts, <laughs> under the name of of uh you know something something completely some shell company somewhere, you know that's what's going on. It it has to be, it yeah. has to be. Same thing that t- that happened in Uranium One, right? State Department. Who, by the way, what I'm finding as I go through this this book, I'm still listening to it. I haven't even gotten through the whole thing yet. But um, this Devil's Chessboard is that the State Department. And the CIA are basically in lockstep. They're two, they're basically, you know, <laughs> they are both one and the same, really. When it comes down to it, their policies and their the things that they do and the meddling that they do in other countries, et cetera. So it goes right back to both the um um oh what's the the uh, the guy's last name? Starts with the I can't I'm drawing a blank. Um Dulles, the Dulles brothers, right? It goes back yep. to both of them. One was in State Department. One was in CIA. And uh, Alan was the he was the devil, and uh, and and his brother was basically one of his minions. And um, it, it was those are the two guys that were behind it the entire time. And this is where we are today. And so you can go back to to Hillary Clinton's State Department, and you you think, well, thank God she wasn't president. Well, she did more damage as as uh, you know leading the State Department than she did anywhere else. I mean, you can go look at Benghazi, look at the secrets that were given to China and everybody you know on the planet in lieu of pay. That was the key. They were giving out money to to these programs, and then they would take the you know say 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 they gave Libya you know ten billion dollars. Well, the 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 prince or king or whoever it is in Libya would turn right back around and he would he would make a donation to the Clinton Foundation and then that's how they were getting paid so they were taking our money pushing it out as a as a program to help you know uh you know build roads or whatever it may be and then a certain cut of that money go right back into the foundation that's right. that laundering money and it and why they're not in jail i have, well that just tells you everything they're part of the deep state it's teflon <laughs> and that's where we are today well, we're gonna we're gonna put another uh, one point seven billion dollars in for um, security and infrastructure. We're gonna rebuild the roads in Ukraine, and we're gonna do all these things. Yeah, are you now? Well, that sounds a lot like Uranium One. It really is starting to to. And I bet at the end of the day, if you really, if somebody were to pull it all together and really start to look at it, you'd you'd probably start to see the connectivity there. <sighs> I just, I, I, I guess the reason why I'm sighing and the reason why I'm just like very, like in that ugh mode, is can it not be more obvious? Yeah, I, I, I remember you mentioned Uranium One. I remember when Uranium One happened years and years and years and years and years and years ago. Yeah, and I had very limited knowledge of the inner workings of that whole situation. Yeah. I asked myself, how in the world? 
Can a serious lieutenant in a presidential administration like the Department of State broker a deal for nuclear material or material that could be enriched for nuclear purposes that puts the United States at a very distinct and unique disadvantage yeah. all at the benefit of a person who's in power to be able to manipulate those things. And no one say a word. I guess it's the same thing that how can that same operative start a civil war in Libya? How right. and, and, not, and not a lick be said, especially yeah. when it involves the death of four American citizens. Yeah. Right. Just like it was nothing, like it was just another pawn tool. Or how yeah. can a hundred thousand plus email uh, uh, messages be destroyed? Yeah. And yet you're seeking to federally prosecute a president who not only had power to declassify documents, but you're federally prosecuting him for mishandling a document that you don't even know exists. Yeah. Yeah. That's deep state. It is. Find, find the person and I will find you the crime. Yes, that's exactly right. Find the person and I'll find you the crime. Yeah. That's came. exactly what we're looking at. Yeah, we came, we saw, or, or no, we came, we killed him, and we left, right? What was that, uh, and that was Hillary, something along those lines? Yes. Yeah, but Uranium One, go. I mean, even go back to the Bureau of Land Management. Look, Remember that that whole deal with the, the Bundys and all of that? You go go look up, you know, the areas that they were doing, they were getting into. I mean, you go look at the, the governor of, of uh, Oregon, right? I think Kate Brown was her name. And look at the deals she did with these uranium companies. There, there's, dude, there's so much still smoking gun that that nobody is even bothering to investigate. Nobody, because if you did, you would you would literally lock up all of probably twenty years worth of of uh, of people within our our government body, from the Clintons all the way to to the Obamas to every president we probably have had in the last, you know, how many years. The Bushes, I mean, all of them, they would they would basically all be in jail if you really went by the rules and the laws that we, the people, have to follow. But they don't. That's the whole thing. And so people talk about, well, oh, Trump's still president. Well, whatever. You can say whatever you want to say, but at the end of the day, you're assuming that we are all following the laws, the rule of law, and that, and, and we're not. We are. The people are. We're held to that, to that. But the people that are running this country are not. And they're not following the rules, not following the laws. And so regardless of whatever we may want to believe, that is the reality. It's, it is, they're, they're set to a different set of, they're Teflon. Let's just put it that way. They're all made of Teflon. Nothing will ever be done to any of them, even though uh, they have basically pillaged our, com our, our country uh, and, and stolen from us to the point where we're now, you know, we don't have any way to even back the money that they're printing these days. You know, it's just completely irrelevant they're just spending it until and wait just knowing okay this is all going to crash we just got to convert everything that we've stolen from the people and make it into a digital currency and we'll be just fine <laughs> it's, it's not, dude yeah. it's it's so evil i mean yeah. there, there's just and and again i i cannot help but to be livid over this nonsense because yeah. it our nation is suffering as a direct result and that's the problem it's like when are people going yeah. to to see this for what it is. You know what I mean? When yeah, are they going to understand the, the, the mindset that exists within the hearts and the minds of people to just know what's going on? Right. Yeah. It's just, yeah. to me, it's just crazy. It, you know, it is crazy. Um, it, and it's, it, it's, it, you know, it has to be this way. Honestly, there's, there's, this takes us straight to, to God's plan. God told us it was going to be this way. Yep. You know? Yep. God I guess, I guess uh, so. So here's a question, right? Yeah. If where in order for people to be able to get away with what we're seeing right now happening in the current situation in which we're in, right? All yeah. of the crazy they call it misgivings, but they're not. They're calculated and very exerted efforts to destroy the republic for many different reasons. We don't have to get into it. Where do you do you think that this goes back before even World War One? The pattern yeah. has to be there, bro. Yeah. It has to have started with the Industrial Revolution. 
Uh, maybe. And there's a reason why I'm thinking this. The more I've been digging into all of the material that ties into this, the more I'm beginning to think the moment economy began to really become the main driver, that's when all of this globalization starts coming into play. That's what drove it. I, yeah. I, I can't imagine. Maybe, forgive me for saying this, maybe as far back as the assassination of Lincoln. I, I, I mean, anything's possible. I've never really, I, I mean, I haven't gone deeper than, than the OSS stand-up because that, that was kind of the route where all of the German uh, Nazi stuff started to come in uh, because they were recruiting them um, on both sides of the, of the, of the fence, you know, and, uh, when you're, you're recruiting people, you have to be friendly in order to recruit them. Right. You don't go in and strong arm them and go, you're now, you're now one of us and you're going to do what we tell you. Cause they're, they're not going to, they're going to, you know, they may do it once or twice, but they're sooner or later, they're going to turn on their, on their master. Right. And so the, uh, it, it, you had to have some level of, of friendship between the Nazis in the United States in order for this to be successful. And, and that's where I, you know, I haven't looked beyond, I haven't pulled the thread beyond the OSS, but uh, you know, you, you probably could, and you probably would start to see some kind of line, uh, lineage there, right. That would show you the, the route to this evil. But it seems to me like the OSS was where it all kind of started. So whoever was behind that OSS piece, you know, if you probably went and kept going through that, pulling that thread, you'd probably find that they were they were evil as well and that uh, this was all part of some plan. I mean, at some point you got skull and crossbones. At some point you've got, uh, you know, the Bilderbergs. You've got, um, uh, you know, the Atlantic Council. Um, you've got all of these different things that were all starting to radiate from that. And that looks to be where they actually started to gain ground and put in, you know, getting that root structure with their money. Um, there was a five-star trust that came out right when the CIA started going. That's how they got all their money and funding because they had, uh, they had more money than probably, you know, if I had to guess right there along the lines of probably the Vatican, you know, in terms of money, which we know the Vatican city is the, that's the, the richest city on the planet. So they got more more wealth and money in that than that little city than anywhere else on in the world. So I, you know, I don't know, which really makes me think because nobody. Oh really yeah, knows you're you're, you're going there, and I'm I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> right, but, you're beginning but, to steal the thought right out of my mouth. Go ahead. Well, no, but then I, I you hear you hear King Charles up there talking about uh, that they they have you know wealth beyond any global GDP. And I'm like, well, there ain't but one place on the planet that's got that kind of money, maybe, but nobody knows really how much money they have. And that's Vatican City. I, you know, I don't know, man, dude. I'm just, it's, uh, I don't know. Sometimes you're, we, we start talking about things and we're both like, Whoa, wait a minute, where are we heading? And like, wait a second. We just, you just basically picked that scab right off, <laughs> off of that, that talking uh, point. It's yeah, it, I don't know. I don't know that we'll ever be able to get our head because it is so convoluted. That's the devil, right? That's how you know the devil is at the root of all of this because it, it, there's just so many different spider webs that there's no way you could ever figure out which one actually gets to it until you're you're you know you're on it, and uh, at that point it's too late. Spiders got you, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, looks I like we have a, looks like we have me. looks like we have a lot of work to do for our for our local shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It's like it's a race against time. It's like, okay, what's going to happen first? We're going to be raptured or are they going to kill us first? One or the other. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I Okay, so, um, gosh, do I want to go there online right now? Well, I don't know. You got to be careful, man. We'll end up getting... Have you been demonetized yet, by the way? Oh, you know what? I'm sure I have. Yeah. I am sure that I have. I I, I have to be. I, I'm I mean, I'm hoping not, but you know, I mean, it's gonna you, I'm shocked. I have not been yet. Yeah, we're getting pretty good at uh, at uh Yeah, we are. I mean, we're getting really good at staying staying it within YouTube's policies. But yes, bro, like come on. Well, the that, problem that's crazy. The problem that you run into is that 
if they change their policy at any point, it's retro. And all yeah, of a right. sudden, uh, their and AI all, yep. it up and you're done. Yep. Yeah. And then this you're is, like, this is uh, this is the problem, man. This has been kind of the one of the challenges that, and, and matter of fact, it's one that we're kind of working on right now. We're trying to work on on working through it. By the way, uh, yeah. speaking of which, uh, Hector Beatrice, um, I I agree with what you're saying. I just don't know if I can read that message in its entirety. <laughs> so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it to where you're at. Not completely. I mean, I I I need to make some clarifications of what you're writing there, but uh, yeah, I think. Thank you, by the way, for your support, but I'm just going to leave that be uh, because that's a name that a lot of people, those are two names that a lot of people are not familiar with, and there's a lot of clarity that needs to be brought to the yeah. table with that statement, a lot. Yeah. But I, it's not one of those things that, and maybe maybe today in Locals we can talk about it. We'll just leave it maybe. there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. There's a lot of research you have to do to, to, to dig into this stuff. It, the data's out there. It's out there. I will tell you, most of it is counter to what we were ever taught in school. Yep. Like you, you really start to pull the thread and you go, wait a second. <laughs> Bro, that's why my, that's why my children are going to be homes. I mean, they are homeschooled. It's yeah, I'm, my, not, I'm not letting my, that happen, bro. Too. Yeah. Mine were too, but it's, it's very interesting because the, the history that we're taught is really, it's all been, been closely scrutinized and changed over the years and things that are like, Oh, now they're politically sensitive. We have to let's strike that from the textbook and let's get the new version. And that's all money racket in and of itself because they come out with the, the next thing when they've all they've done is edit, edit three words and change the date on the thing. And now, you know, um, yeah, yeah the, the thing that, and just so that people know what he's referring to, what Hector's referring to is a whole, it's, it's basically the premise of, the Illuminati world, right? Secret yeah. society stuff, right? Yeah. But there, there's going cross that stuff. Yeah, that stuff yeah. shows its ugly face through the deep state. And like I, people, um, it's twined. Yeah, it's really, like really there, interesting. There is a difference, and we've said this many, many times. And and when you start to research all of this yourself, or start to read some of these books and get into the details uh, behind them, or understand, or, or even people that know their history really well. Uh, there is a difference between the deep state and the cabal. They're two. They're not. They're not the same. They may work together and in, in intertwine from time to time, but they're not the same. They have their own set of agendas. Uh, the deep state is is what you would call an, uh, the shadow government. That's really what what it is. It's it's an operation that is kind of below the surface, like a submarine um, that is basically calling all the shots and running all the stuff, and has been for a very, very long time, almost probably a hundred years in terms of how they operate. Um, and I'll just say it. I, I, we've said it before, bro. It, and, and, and I'll say, say it. it again. This is run by literally the devil himself. People, people don't get this. The enemy is so good at inspire. Hey, you know what? Two can play that game. The enemy is so good at inspiring people to think. Now, and I'm serious, by the way, this shot right here, just a little funny thing about this shot. Yeah. This shot was designed to be uh, a, a, an ode to one of the greatest broadcasters who ever lived on the face of the earth. Vinny would know the reference immediately, and that'd be yeah. Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, that's, that's, right. that's where this studio design came from right here, and that's actually where this camera angle came from. I, yeah. I saw that recently on your, on, your, um, on your recent sit rep, and I love that, dude. I love that yeah. angle. Side, side angle there. I think it's super cool. Look, man, I got my banana phone. I can call straight to the big man. <laughs> Anytime Dude, I want, man. I, I, I'm, in, I'm in love with that angle. I'm sorry. I just think it's awesome. I yeah. think it's just. Mr. Big Daddy, yo, I got a deal for you, man. Hey, yo, hey, I got something for you, homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all. Yeah. I was about to. More <laughs> that white powder. I was about to do Why something not? crazy. Yeah, boy. I'm about to do something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, it's, it would be really, really cool shot if I didn't have a uh, a door right here in the in the center of the shot. But uh, uh, I just have to figure it all out. It's it's uh, yeah, it's cool. I just kind of tinker around with it from time to time. I need to do it where it fades, where it just kind of transitions over. But um, yeah, anyway. I uh, so I uh, so okay. Yeah. Let's just hit the backup for just one second and oh, yeah. go to. Um, 
Oh, okay. uh, another yeah. issue. Uh, you know, I've got I got a few of these, by the way. See, I got oh, yeah. this one. Too. That's the yeah. Dell one right there. That's the one that we did when we were in the studio. Yeah. We're gonna add a few more cameras. We have to do that. Um, but, bro, um, okay. Let can we just talk about illegal immigration for just a second, right? And what that has to do with the deep state construct that we're looking at. Because here's another connection. And okay. by the way, me and you may have talked about this loosely, I think yeah. early on when we were digging through this stuff, we, we may have talked about, yeah. but if you stop for a moment and you begin to look at Eastern and Western Europe, all of what I like to call the manufactured crises that created a condition where people ran from the borders yeah into other borders right okay. let's just talk about what happened in hungary a few years ago right um or some of these other type of situations bro yeah. <clears throat> if you stop to study those for just a moment you <laughs> will begin to recognize a parallel that is scary yeah the parallel that exists <clears throat> is almost <clears throat> exactly like what we are witnessing happening on our southern border right now with mexico yeah. Forced, forced migration is what it they is call it. It is a forced migration tool that is being used to create a slightly different political environment. That's right. That creates a level of dissidentsum, dissidentsum, dissidency that creates a level of up, dissidentsum. Yeah. What in the wrong is what in the what, what in the world is wrong with me? That creates a certain level of dissidence mm -hmm. amongst people who have no regard or understanding for the very tenets of the creation of our country. Yeah. It, it is, it is a, a political maneuvering that does not take into regard the destruction of the future. Correct. Yeah. No. Why uh, can't it, we recognize yeah. the patterns? It's the same people doing it. Because we don't have a multimedia conglomerate that will basically, you know, that we can broadcast to the rest of the world so that everybody is on the same sheet of music. We see the problem is they have the sheet of music. They have the music notes and they all know how to communicate together. We do not. We are all, we got one sheet of music and one note and that is God's word. And that's really where we ought to be grounded on. But the, these guys, um, that's the thing that, uh, if you look at, for example, look at France right now and the problem that they have with this uprising going on, right? It is because of that very thing. It's It has to do with the immigration, the migrants that were pushed in. Remember when uh, ISIS or ISIL, as as uh, the Kenyan would call it, started? And all of a sudden you had all of these, these uh, you know, people in burkas rolling into Germany and Switzerland and all these other places. And there were ladies that were blonde hair that were getting you know, um, uh, I, I'm not saying the word cause it'll get you banned or it'll get something, but, uh, you know, they would be surrounded by these guys and these guys would basically just be, be, beat them into oblivion and have their way with them on trains. And people would just stand in shock because they didn't know how to even react to it because they were a civilized country. And, um, but you go over to, to France right now, you look at the unrest it's because, and this is what they're saying is because the, the immigration policy or lack thereof and uh, Macron, when one of his police officers happened to kill a, a young boy that was from uh, Northern Africa, that, um, you know, that's what set it off because you have enough in the population that is already, you know, keen to unrest. You look at the yellow jacket or, or the yellow vest uh, movement. And then, uh, you know, all the stuff that's been happening in recent weeks, and uh, with with him basically, you know, changing policy so that now you can't retire at a younger age. You have to work more years and everything else. Right. And they 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 went took to the streets for that. That's the environment. When you talk about pushing in the migrants from other countries, you look at every other country with the exception of the United States. And and you will see that when things start going hot, uh, go look at Sri Lanka, look at any of the other ones that have recently had ha things happen in, in Africa, Brazil. Venezuela, as soon as things start to get a little bit shaky, man, they take to the streets and they know how to mix it up. Here in the United States, we don't do that. We're a little more civil. We hang back in our little bubble and we go, eh, I'm not going to get in on that. It's too hot outside, right? Or I don't really like gas masks. And, uh, and, and 
I don't like gas. And so, you know what I mean? It's, but you take these people that are coming into your country in, uh, you know, who have no problem doing that. And man, here you go. You've just mixed up the environment enough where if you create and then, you know, something that would trigger an unrest, they're going to be the first ones that go. They're going to bounce right out there. And it's so hard to emphasize this to people. People have, look, it, it becomes clear when you're able to recognize biblical precedent. Okay. We have yeah. to talk about this because yeah. when we talk about the end times, you must recognize biblical patterns. You have to. If you don't, you're not going to be able to create an application to what we know is going to happen in the future. First of all, the Bible does a couple of things for us, right? And forgive me for, I'm going to run with this a little bit. Number okay. one, the Bible actually tells us what's going to happen in the future. It's just outright blatant. The Bible tells us. It tells us to what to, what to expect in the last days. It tells us what to uh, what we should be uh, anticipating, what we should be knowing, what we should be understanding. The Bible doesn't make any kind of ambiguity with what with respect to what we should be seeing in the last days. It tells us in the last days people are going to call right wrong and wrong right. The Bible tells us about wars and rumors of wars. The Bible tells us about all kinds of things that we know are going to happen. Let's take it a step further. The Bible, in case we're lacking clarity even gives us geopolitical stands and maneuverings that will exist in the time as we move forward. A great example, we've already mentioned it before, Ezekiel 38. When you look at everything that the Bible says is going to happen per Ezekiel 38, look, here's the history. Ezekiel 37, God is going to be gathering Jews in their unbelief back to their land. It's happening right now. It's beginning to be fulfilled. We're watching it. Ezekiel 38 speaks of a war that is going to take place led by a person. It's a title of a person, Gog, presumably the leader of Russia from yeah. the region of Magog with yeah. a conglomerate of nations that will attack Israel. Russia is going to be the head of it. And the funny thing about this maneuvering that's going to take place is we know they're going to come from the north. When we talk about north, we're talking about north of Israel. In the Bible, when you hear north, south, east, west, it's to the north of Israel, south of Israel, east of Israel, west of Israel. So yeah. they're going to be attacking from the north, which means the only presumption left is that they're going to be coming from Syria. They yeah. have to be. And the idea that you begin to see Russia already making itself at home, as a matter of fact, has already declared the border of Syria at Israel to be its own sovereign territory. They take on sovereign positions there, and Israel has already made it a point to have regular discussions with Russia before yep. they conduct uh, national defense operations in Syria, particularly in or around Damascus, right? So yep. let's just think about this for one second, right? We know that that attack is going to come there. It's happening. Turkey's relationship is changing uh, has already changed. Iran is in bed with Russia. They've been in bed with Russia for a long time. Iran represents the minority of Muslims in the world. They are the Shiites, not the Sunnis, yet they're the most feared, right? You have uh, literal proxies of Iran that are acting in different parts of the region that are highly effective, like the Yemenis Houthis to the southern border of Saudi Arabia. You've got uh, Russia who is not a proxy of anybody. Russia is in and of itself, but you have proxies of Iran that are being allowed to function by Russia, particularly uh, on the corners or the borders of the Dead Sea, right? Or mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the Red Sea. I keep saying the yeah. Dead Sea. The Red yeah. Sea. And then you have what looks like a civil war that is about to be won in Libya. Of course, the winner of that civil war is going to end up being Russia, Russia will now have an area to secure the northern border of Libya, which happens to be the southern Mediterranean, which okay. will then secure assets all throughout the Mediterranean because the other proxy that I did not mention of Iran is going to be the proxy that functions without anybody holding them back, especially Beirut. Beirut's not going to speak up. They're functioning in Lebanon. They're called Hezbollah, meaning the party of Allah. And the funny thing about Hezbollah is they are the strongest, most powerfully organized terrorist organization in the country. They happen to be Iran's number one proxy, which Russia and Turkey allow to function as it were its own state. 
So yep. you have that happening. You've got extended and expanded operations by Hezbollah using Iranian drones attacking assets of Israel that are off the coast. This is no joke, right? Off the Mediterranean coast of Israel, the northern Mediterranean, uh, the northern coast of Israel, right? When you talk about the north, uh, not the northern above Israel, above Israel is Lebanon. But when I say north, I'm talking about northwest, right? Northwest coast of Israel. You have assets that are being attacked. The IDF has been remarkably well at uh, thwarting those attacks as well as the IAF. But that's created a debate that's going on now between the president of the United States leading a few other people to be unfriendly towards Israel because Israel's changing stance with respect to their rights of mineral rights and oil rights in the Mediterranean that belong to them in the first place. Yeah. Then you have an energy crisis that's beginning to take place, which is radically affecting the geopolitics of Western Europe specifically, which yep. is becoming a problem. You've got a land bridge uh, discussion that's beginning to happen yet again. So yeah. all of this stuff is beginning to happen. We are watching the formation of Ezekiel 38. And here's the funny thing about Ezekiel 38. They're all going to be friends. Russia is in good graces with Israel right now, just like they will be when they attack Israel. And yeah. when they attack Israel, nobody will be able to stop Russia except God. So let's just take that aspect of it. We know what the Bible says. We can easily accept the geopolitics associated with it because the Bible lays it out for us. But here's something else the Bible lays out for us. The Bible lays out the satanic patterns that have always been created by Satan and launched by Satan to inoculate mankind from wanting to receive the truth serum of God's word. And the funny thing about that is, as, as the devil continues to cast dispersion upon the word of God, you begin to see patterns of secular humanistic philosophy affect and change governments which then begin to change the way nations function. So we saw this early, early on in the Bible. We saw Jeroboam do this when he changed the way uh, worship was taking place in Israel. We saw um, all kinds of things in the Northern Kingdom specifically. We've been watching the manipulation of secular humanistic philosophy destroy societies, destroy nations, destroy mankind. All of these things you're talking about is all inspired by the same person, and that's Satan. And then... <laughs> To make things worse, it's being used to destroy the United States of America right now so that the United States becomes inconsequential and no longer has the ability to stop or intervene in any of these actions. It will be eventually taken towards Israel. And then to make things worse, just in case we're not clear on how the enemy does what he does, we are being given a picture of what's going to happen once the church is raptured in Revelation chapter 6 with secular humanistic philosophy-driven government. And that is when the final Antichrist comes into picture. He is going to drive that type of government, right? That's the white horse in Revelation chapter 6. It's going to bring us to the red horse, which is war. And then it's going to bring us to the black horse, which of course is the ec economic failure. What? Yeah. We still have a ruling class that we're preserving. And then it brings us to the pale horse, which is death. 25% of the world's population dies. Here's the funny thing. God warned us. God showed us how to run government. God told us how Satan will seek to infiltrate government. God showed us how to raise our children. He warned us how the enemy is going to seek to infiltrate the minds and the hearts of our children. God warned us about the things that would happen in the end. He told us exactly what it would take place. And you know what? The more ignorant people become of the word of God, the more inclined they become to want to abandon the word of God. And the most tragic and unfortunate part about that is in a nation's willing full decision to abandon the word of God, they have also abandoned sound doctrine. And in abandoning sound doctrine, they have lost their ability to lead the nation. One last thing. We saw this happen with King Solomon. King Solomon was made the wisest king that ever ruled. God gave him that wisdom. But as his secularization started to infiltrate within his heart, when he began to accept the 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 uh, traditions of other kings he collected women and horses and all the other stuff that he did people don't get this the fact that solomon had a bunch of women wasn't because he had some insatiable appetite for sex the reason why he collected women was because women were used by other nations to create treaty type relationships 
And God said, you don't need that security by creating those treaties. You need that security by coming to me. How did they create a, a treaty? Well, you've got the, uh, you know, the father of a daughter who says, I'm going to be, I want to be in a treaty with your nation. And I know you won't attack my nation if my daughter lives in your nation, right? I mean, you think about that for a second. That's exactly how treaties were made back then. And God condemned it. And that's the thing that we learn. When people, when leaders take their eyes off Jesus, destruction comes. When church leaders take their eyes off Jesus, destruction comes. The Bible made it clear. We know why, we know when, we know how it's happening. We see it all beginning to take place. And when I say when, I'm not talking about God's giving us a date to set. I'm saying when, it happens when man chooses to take their heart away from God. It's that simple. That's why Bible prophecy is so important, and that's why we got to pay attention to it. Amen. Uh, I'm just going to give you an observation. Normally, yeah. I sit here and watch the chat board like, like just clicking right along dude you were so over the target that's why i love you so much man i i was just like listening because this is a, a a history lesson in the bible and i'm just listening and i look over at the chat and everybody is doing the same thing and nobody the chat board isn't even moving everybody <laughs> like this right here it isn't because like, they all left bro <laughs> no no it's it, it's no it's crazy man uh, you, dude, you are so, which I, I don't know how you keep all that in your head, man. I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting here thinking, uh, wait, what did I have for breakfast this morning? You know, <laughs> and you're like, same way, bro. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, just like, and it's, and it's what's crazy. And there ain't nobody else can do this, but you and, 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 uh, and maybe Jack Hibbs. Yeah. Jack's amazing. That, He's smart. Yep. He's yeah. Great. You are, it's sound doctrine. You're not, you're not ad-libbing. You're not throwing something in there, you know, trying to make it bridge, bridge the gap or something. You are very factual and, and just everything you give is somebody could take their Bible, open that up and go, just follow it and all the way through. And you lay it out to a point where it's, it's very, very clear. I mean, when you go from 37, Ezekiel 37 through 38 and you paint the picture, you're, you were spot on. And that's, and that's why when I watch this, I was just watching everybody just. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that, bro. I was just in my own world. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> it, yeah. I was just watching. I'm like, eh, the, the chat is not even moving. People are just, just yeah, listening. It's pretty killer. So. Well, I, but it's, you know, it's really funny. You can see the connections being made. It's not like it's a difficult thing, right? Like yeah. uh, it's, it's so easy to see the connections because God laid it out for us. He did. It's not he even did. like there's a question. No, it's and and the further we get along in history, the more clear and evident that, that uh, his word becomes to, to many people, not just, you know, people that maybe are, you know, grasping it a little better than others. Uh, it's it's like you, you can read it and go, oh, like like Revelation 13, you start talking about the beast system, and all of a sudden, in the last couple of years, five years, we see all this AI come online, we see all these things taken, we see the hologram stuff, we see the deep fakes, we see the ability for them to, to do things now where people, you, it's hard to tell what's real. And, um, and the that whole, you know, trying to, you know, the devil trying to emulate God and, and imitate God, right? Through his, so the only true. way he could ever be, you know, have any uh, omnipresence would be the fact that you'd have to have AI to watch everyone. And you and how do you do that? You develop that system that is uh, basically a mass surveillance technology or capability, which is what they've done. They did it all through DARPA, which takes you back to the Germans because that's who started DARPA. It was the Nazis that came over that we we pulled in under Project uh, Paperclip uh, or Operation Paperclip. Project? Oper uh, op uh, now yeah. you got me all second guessing, bro. Project Paperclip. Operation Paperclip. Anyway, it's all the same. They, they know what I'm talking about. But that's how they got, that's how they started it. They started that, the CIA and, uh, and NASA. And here we are, you know, and they all, you look at everything that's going on in the world and how we're, we're headed down very, very rapidly down that same path. Uh, and that all three of those are just kind of pushing us all down that same, that same to the exact same point, And that is that B system where the antichrist will come into play. And yeah, dude, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, uh, it's nuts. It's like Chevy chase in the swimming pool. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, dude, but it's true. 
It's it's totally true. And the th- see the thing that really bothers me about all of this, and I and I and I have to just say this because it just drives me insane. Like it just drives me insane. Mm-hmm. Is it so dang obvious? It, like it why, is. why why I don't understand why people just choose to to ignore it. Like they believe the lie. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, I think, honestly, I think that really goes to show you that there's going to be a lot of people left behind. I think there's going to be, uh, because it doesn't matter. There's, I think there's a spiritual blindness over them that they don't have the ability to even see it. And if you, if they hear it, they can't recognize it. It's, it's like telling people, you know, Jews that, uh, about Jesus, until that spiritual blindness is lifted off of that individual, they, they're not going to, they ain't going to see it. Doesn't matter. You could talk to your blue in the face and they're going to be like, Oh, I can't see it. it. It's just, I can't get my head around it. So like a numb spot in my brain that doesn't allow me to, to, to process that. Yeah, bro. It's true. It's true. Yeah. There's a hard, I mean, even in this world, I mean, you just look at the things that are happening in the world right now and you realize, dang, like pe- I don't think people recognize the depths by which the blindness is happening. And that's why the church is the preserving influence, you know, per second Thessalonians two, it's like without the preserving influence, the, the world is going to just go insane. And I, yeah. I don't think people recognize that. I don't yeah. think they see it. Yeah. You think things are dark now, man. You wait, oh, yeah. till, you wait till people are, are plucked up and then there is none of that left. There's no sound of, uh, of, uh, you know, there is no voice of reason anymore and there's no one to challenge uh, the darkness, you know, and hold back that darkness. And it is going to come on to people. You'll feel it. I, I can't imagine what it would feel like to have that, that Holy Spirit just lifted away from the people and oh. that, that, that just total darkness that just envelopes them of emptiness and not feeling that and not, not having hope. And just, it, I, this, dude, it's going to be scary when that, when, when that happens. I don't even, I, I, I can't even begin to imagine what that would look like. I can't, I don't want to imagine. I, 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 it's, it's, nightmare. it's, it's, it's a picture that is so incredibly like, I wish we could communicate the gravity of, of what we're talking about here. Yeah. Like, I just wish we could communicate it. Well, I think it would can, change the, it would just change everything. You would, it, it would. Yeah. I mean, you, you can hear people that have, that have had near death experiences that have talked about hell and you can hear some of the things that they say. And it's, you talk about horrifying, like the gravity is so strong that you can't, you can't even scream your voice. Nothing comes out yep. and you're in agony. And, and, uh, but, but yet you can hear people all around you. Just, just blood curdling yells. Like how do they even get that out? Uh, you know, like it, it's, it is, I, I just can't imagine, can't even imagine, uh, and nor do I want to, and I'm just thankful that I've been redeemed and, and that, uh, that I know where I'm going, man. I, I, I wouldn't imagine. And here's the reality. And I, I was telling this to my Q and a the other day after the show, the reality is you're going one place or the other, you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell one or yeah. the other. And if you've got a question in your mind right now about where you're going, you better start getting your your house in order because uh, it, it, you don't want to be wavering on that. You should know deep in your whole, I mean, just every, and your, your greatest existence, like when you get up in the morning, your feet hit the floor, you go to bed at night, you should know in your heart of hearts where you're going. Like I, I, I'm going to heaven. I know straight up, you know, it's like if somebody passes away and you go, man, were they a believer? You know, you you think, dude, you think they went to heaven or hell? You know, it's that question. If somebody's a- asking that about you, then you're not walking the walk. <laughs> yeah, no, it's you true. Know? And there's also something that's really interesting. And you talked about having the confidence of heaven. This is this is uh, an issue that's very difficult to explain to people. And I think this is a great closing thought, right? Yeah. So the whole issue of a, of of confidence of of going to heaven centers around a principle that I have tried to implement in the mind of some of the people that have worked for me in the past. Yeah. Most of the time, people that can't get this, they end up leaving, right? Yeah. Because it's just, if you can't be corrected and you can't receive counsel, you're not going to, you're not going to work out. Right. Yeah. And, and it's hard because uh, I, we are very fast paced here. We all run fast. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I don't physically run fast, but you know what I mean? Um, right. and, and here's the thing. I tell this to people all the time. I say, listen, I have a specific way I'm asking you to do something. And you need to do it this way. And it, it might not make sense to you. And it might even seem like busy work. It's the proverbial, what we call wax on, wax off for anybody that watched the karate kid, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like, why, am, why, are you, yeah, why are you telling me to wax yeah. when I want to learn karate, right? Yeah. And so this is what happens with our young generation. Forgive me, but this is true. It's happening with yeah. our young generation, the copy paste technology generation. Yeah. We tell them, look, you have to do this. And they say, I have a better way of doing it. I got better tools. I got a better way of doing it. The problem is this. The problem is they, in their arrogance and foolishness, choose not to listen to counsel. Yeah. And then they literally cut themselves off from receiving the education that doing that work would actually bring to the table. Yeah. yeah. They don't do the work. Yeah. And when they don't do the work, they don't get better because, ready, here's the phrase, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, that's right. And when you don't know what you don't know, a lot of people don't realize that people who don't know what they don't know have forced themselves to be in the position where they won't learn, thus they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. So I get people that come to me all the time and say, well, I'm really worried. I don't think I'm going to go to heaven. The Bible this and the Bible that. And I'm not so sure and so on and so forth. I tell them the same thing. You don't know what you don't know because you have not made the investment necessary to be able to know the word so well that it proves itself to you. Yeah. Now, I talk to people all the time that are new believers and say, well, I'm not so sure I'm going to heaven. I, look, praise God, that's okay. There's where your faith is going to come into play and God's going to be with you and so on and so forth. But when you don't make the investment necessary to be able to understand the heart and the might of God through the study of his word, you're never going to understand that that unspoken confidence. It's never going to happen, yeah. right? Because yeah. you have to make the investment. You have to know the word of God. You have to see God's proven track record, right? Yeah. Like somebody could come to me and say, um, James, monkey said this statement and I think it's wrong. My instant reaction to somebody who says monkey made that statement and I think is wrong is going to be, no, I actually think you're wrong. Why? Yeah. Because I know monkey's vetting process. Yeah. I know all the stuff that he goes through to make sure that the information he puts out is is right. Now, does he make mistakes? Yes. Just yeah. like I make mistakes, yeah. right? Yeah. But I have reasonable confidence in knowing that when a statement is being made, it's not going to be there's not going to be a mistake in it. Now, the funny thing about this is I also know God's track record. And God's track record is he's never made a mistake. It's yeah. perfect. It so mistake. if he's never made a mistake, how much more can I have confidence in what his word says? That's right. I think that's really important. So that's kind of where we're at right now, bro. And I think it's a it's a great way to kind of um, end this whole thing. You know, I don't know. What do you what do you think? Yeah, no, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Let's Any final comments or close closing statements? Anything, bro? Yeah, just tell people, hey, just just stay focused. You know, you know what you need to do, and um, you don't uh, you don't need to hear it from us to tell you it's in your heart, and you know. Because he's the one talking to you, not not it, it's not us. I mean, he uses us to tell to say things and to confirm things, but it's uh, it's you know, the world we live in. We all know we know the darkness that is out there. It's black and white. It's uh, it's uh, you know, and God is sovereign, and he he already the battle has already been won. He did that through his son on the cross, and and uh, you and I and everybody that has been saved has you know he paid the price in full. And devil can't take that. So you gotta Amen. remember that. Amen. And I, I and it's I can tell you this. Um, I was there with you when you really decided to just straight up turn up your biblical education. I mean, you you really jumped into it full force even before I was around. This is when when we were in the days of you were watching our videos, but I didn't know you. Yeah. And and in the last couple of years, bro, you have worked harder than most that I know to learn the word of God. And it's paying off. You can see it. You can yeah. hear it. I, I. It's like it's. It's kind of cool. And folks, I don't know if you know this, but Monkey's going to start doing Countdown to Eternity with us. That's right. I, I. That's not a. I don't. I don't give that national radio show to somebody to work with me unless I'm confident in their ability to understand the Word of God. I mean, that's how. Yeah. That's how awesome God works. Yes. Isn't that just amazing to see how God does that, guys? That this is, is exciting cool. stuff. Yeah, like, is. how how can we not be excited about what God's doing here? 
Yeah, for sure. It's, it's pretty amazing. So, all right. Well, with that, let's wrap it up. Monkey, do you want to pray for us, bro? Yeah, I can do right, that. Let's do it. All right. Father God, we just thank you for this time together, Lord. We thank you for just keeping us focused on your word and just guiding us through that word, Lord. We, we pray for those in this community, Lord, that you would just bless them richly, Lord, that you would just uh, surround them with the warring angels, Lord, that uh, that you would protect us during these times, protect our minds and our bodies. It's uh, Lord, we just thank you for your son and, uh, and the blood that he shed on the cross, Lord. It's in his holy and beautiful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, you guys. Thank you so much for our Rumble audience is growing substantially. We're breaking records, which is great. Uh, we're, we're consistent more and more, which is good. We are working very hard to, to grow more and more the YouTube side of things. Very excited about that. Lots of great things coming. And in a few minutes, we will jump on Locals. We're going to take some questions. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, we love you guys. God bless you. Give us about uh, five minutes or so, maybe a little bit longer. And we'll see you. Um, we'll see you on locals. Love you guys. God bless you.